Okay, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about the different selection tools here uh, to the left. Uh, all the way up to crop. We'll stop at crop and we'll do that in the next video. All right. First one we're going to do is kind of new. It's pretty cool. Uh, just started playing around with it. Uh, so here are the tools we're going to use. First, we got the movement tool. Um, I've opened some images for us to play around with. Um, first one is pretty cool. It's this artboard tool. I'm um, just starting to play around with it. So when I click artboard, it wants me to create an artboard. The first one I'll create is for the picture I have. And then you'll see these plus signs. Um, I'll zoom out a little bit. Uh, move in a minute, I guess. But uh, you can see these plus signs and you can start to lay out. And it's got different uses, I'm sure, that I'm, that I'm only uh, hitting the surface on using uh, but one thing I noticed right away that I thought was pretty cool okay uh, so when you click on one of these you gotta be right on the edge to move it around but you move it around you can line it up you can pick multiple artboards and use these tools to line it up but um, for web design one thing I noticed that was pretty cool I'll give myself a little bit of room to do this. Um, but imagine that you have a bunch of images all on the same screen, which instead of using multiple tabs, like I'm used to doing. But one thing you can do for web design is you can click on an artboard, come over here to artboard, uh, set artboard to preset, and uh, you can use your web and your mobile presets right here. That's pretty cool. I'll do one to web most common, and I will do one to web minimum. And uh, any of the other, maybe I load some presets for my particular um, website. They look the same, so I'll change that to web medium. And then uh, large. Some mobile. I'll do a standard mobile. And then maybe I'll do a uh, Android 1080. And then finally. iPad Pro. All right. Let's just do an iPhone. Alright. And then I can take all these, you know. And I can uh, select multiple and I can line them up and move them. Uh, however I want here. Um, but the reason I want to do this is that now I can go in here and I can take this, okay, and um, maybe uh, copy it. I can come over here and paste it. And I can move it around to get it looking good on that size. And then I might do it again. Again, I might have to, um, in this case, I might have to change the, um, the size of the image. Like that, but I always want to lock the ratio. It's important to lock that, that ratio in place. And I can make it a little bit smaller. There, that looks good. And hit the check mark. Come over here and paste it again. And, I, and I'll just keep doing it and I'll work through the different um, sizes that I know I'm going to need ahead of time. All right, and now that I have it set up in all the different um, sizes that I want, um, what I can do, it's pretty cool, is I can come over here and hit export. 
and you'll notice artboards to files, artboards to PDF, layers to files. There's different things here, but um, I like artboards to files. So I'm gonna click on that and prefix. Um, Okay, and that'll prefix every one of these with Washington Monument, or underscore, um, and instead of a Photoshop. Now you want, if you're still working on it, you can save them all as separate Photoshop files, but I'm gonna go ahead and save them as PNGs, right? And it'll give more export options that you might normally get, but I don't need those right now. Where do I wanna save it? I'll save them, um, create a new, Folder maybe. Okay, and when I hit run, oh, there we go. Doing its magic. Check that out. This first time I've ever done this. Let's see what it's doing here. There we look. All right, so that's cool. All right, and now it automatically um, resaves each of those images into the different sizes you, you might need for your website. All right, there we go. It says it was successful. All right, I'm not gonna lie. That's the first time I've used that and that's pretty freaking cool. Okay, all right. So the next thing we're gonna do is talk about, um, going down the list, just a normal marquee rectangular tool. And there's a lot of things you can do with this. Um, you can select it and make adjustments. Um, but one thing you can do, I like to do a lot in web design, is to take a piece of an image to, make, to repurpose it for something. Like this is a great image, Martin Luther King Jr. I might wanna make that uh, some sort of banner image um, or title image. And so what I could do is I could create, oops, here. use it and I'll draw a square. I'll go all the way over here. And there we go. I might use that for a website about Martin Luther King Jr. So once that's selected now, I can right click right here. And I can hit layer via copy, layer, layer via cut, all right? So if you wanna cut it out or copy it, I'm gonna hit layer via copy, usually I do that. Then what you can do is just turn off your old layer. Now you have that and you can paste that or whatever. But another thing you can do when you copy something like that that I also like to do is just to start a whole new file. So I'll copy it. Make it a little bit bigger. There we go. Copy, file, new. From the clipboard that I just copied, and I'll paste it in, control V. And now I have this image here that I can use to create some sort of um, banner. I can put some text in here on my website. This would be the background image for some text or the top of the website. That's another good use of Marquee, okay? Uh, all right, you might want to draw out something specific, okay? Like um, one of these uh, uh, tombstones from the uh, Arlington Cemetery, okay? And if you zoom way in, zoom way in, there we go. Move things around, get to what you want to select. Find one that you like, zoom in on it, and then you can create this lasso tool, and you can select by hand, take some skill, okay, so now that you've got that selected, okay, again, I can layer via cup, layer via copy. Uh, there's a feather that I can do, and there's a select and mask. You can create a mask around it, okay? But again, I might do layer via copy. 
And now I have that. Try it again this time. We'll set feather at 20. And what you'll notice with the feather is how much it curves off so that it doesn't look too bad. So we'll go out further this time with the feather at 10. That way if you kind of mess up a little bit and you're drawing, it'll help you to straighten that out. The smaller the feather, the less help you get. So if we do a 30 feather. I notice that it kind of straightens things out, but it's not as precise either. So that's what feathering does. So a small feather for a precise drawing isn't going to kill you too much. You just be outside of it a little bit. And like I said, you can hit um, layer via copy. And with that feathering effect, you can see how it, it kind of, what it does here at the very edge. And if we zoom in and look at the pixels, you'll see how it kind of merges it with the transparent background um, and gives you an, a, a nice, nice look there. So that feather is well worth doing, okay? Um, to give you a better, get a better look on your image. Okay. And the further we zoom out, the better off that looks. Again, now that we've done that, we can use our old square marquee tool and create something that might look good on a site. Copy that. New. And now we have a tombstone logo or, or icon or emoji or something that we might want to use for something, um, you know, later on. Um, some sort of Arlington uh, Memorial, you know, website or something like that. So that's the lasso tool. And finally, the magic wand tool. It's pretty cool. All right, first, um, you'll notice that if you use a magic wand tool for something with a lot going on, basically it tries to match the color. So if you click on it, it's gonna mat, it's gonna it's gonna select a lot of this out here, but it doesn't go all the way around. So you hold down shift, and you can do a pretty good job. But again, there's a lot of colors going on here, so it's really hard to get everything selected the way you want here. You might have to just be forced to use the lasso tool. Um, but this this is a great time to use use it because you're gonna be able to uh, click the magic wand, and the colors are more solid. And I'm going to go ahead and help hold down shift when I did that. So uh, again, um, let's do that again. So I'm going to click it once on the outside here. And then I'm going to hold shift, click here, click here. And you'll see this is, but I can cut that out later. Now here's a trick. Once you have, I've got the outside selected, but I really want to keep the inside. So there's a couple things we can do, depending on how you want to do it. You could, you could cut it. So you could hit um, layer via cut. And what you really want is what's left. And we can cut that out later using the marquee tool, real simple. Put this right here. And you just cut it and never use it. Uh, let's try again. Oh, you gotta actually select the layer there. That'll help. There we go. All right, and now you have it. All right, um, another way to, to do this, once you have everything selected, here is to hit uh, inverse, select inverse, and it'll select the inside. That's pretty cool. And again, lay over your cut, lay over your copy, and we have it selected. Cut that out. And what I might want to do is create a Quick and dirty. So um, I can copy that, and create a new file, or if I wanted to. Um, the last thing I want to talk to you about is um, changing the canvas. So you have the image is the picture, 
image is the picture where the canvas is the border around it. So if I get a canvas size, I can actually go in here and change it to canvas as I want. I can tell it where to take it from, and I want it in pixels. So I might lower that to 800 by 800. And it'll tell me if it thinks it's going to overlap important stuff. All right? Um, but one reason I like to do this is so I can get the exact canvas size I want for the section of the website that I'm going to use. And if you clip off some of the logo that you need, you just simply undo it until you get what you want. Um, so there, there might be a little bit of trial and error here, okay? So that's a good way using the um, magic wand tool to uh, you know you get get what you want. Quick selection tool, okay. Let's play with this a little bit. So we'll go in here and we'll tell it what we want to select, and it's kind of like the backwards of the magic wand tool. So as you can see, this works a little bit better than the magic wand for selecting what I want. Um, it's apparently gotten a whole lot better than the last time I've ever used this tool. But I can click and drag exactly the parts I want. Uh, actually this worked a whole lot better than I'm used to in the past. So that's pretty good right there. I don't know if I really wanted that or not, but again, what we will do we can go from here, we can select inverse, we can uh, layer via co co copy, cut, and in this case, maybe I just want to do cut and remove the background. And now that's really cool. Um, what, that's really cool. So, you know, in my experience here, I've discovered that the um, quick select tool and the artboard tool are new from the last time I used Photoshop and they work really well. But there are a bunch of ways that you can use Photoshop to select things um, so that you can get to work on getting images set up for your website correctly. All right, thanks.